So did you know Alabama is one of the most diverse states in the U.S. when it comes to finding fossils? Depending on where you search in the state, you can find them from almost every time period since the beginning of life on Earth. You see, hunting fossils, especially shark teeth, has actually grown into a pretty widespread hobby amongst the public over the past few decades, and for good reason. I mean, who else can say they've collected the bones of animals from millions of years ago? But here lies the problem. So many new hobbyists want the same experience pulling the perfect fossilized shark's tooth from the ground, but they don't even know where to start. Now, if you're one of these new hobbyists I'm speaking of, you are in luck. Here's some tips I wish I knew before I started fossil hunting. Be sure to stick around until the end because some of these might just surprise you with how simple they really are. So starting right off with probably the most important tip for a beginner, you have to know what geology to hunt. Let's say, for example, you live in North Alabama and you're wanting to go to a creek to find a shark's tooth. Chances are that probably won't happen because here's the thing. The northern half of Alabama's geology is really old. I'm talking super old, like before the dinosaurs old. Theoretically, shark teeth are possible here. So you're telling me there's a chance. But they're almost entirely different than shark teeth from more modern species. Your best bet for quality shark's teeth in Alabama is going to be in the Mesozoic and Cenozoic regions of the state. This basically means anywhere from the Alabama Black Belt and down. So my best advice to learn what areas to hunt is this app right here called Rocked. It's essentially a database of almost all the geologic formations across the globe. The map feature in particular is really nice because it lets you select areas nearby and check things like the name of the formation, the age of it, and many other things that will help you in this regard. So at tip number two, this may sound super simple, but you have to understand what species lived in the geology you're hunting. Let me give you another perfect example here from my own experience. So when I first started fossil hunting, the very first time I ever collected in the field was in an Eocene site just about 20 miles from the Alabama-Florida border. As I was leaving that day, I found a huge shark tooth just laying on the surface. So of course, when I got home, I began researching what kind of shark this could possibly be from. And this is where I made my biggest mistake. I didn't look at the time period it came from. So here my dumbass was, <laughs> looking at pictures of shark teeth on Google Images, seeing which teeth looked familiar enough to it. And there it was. I finally had my Eureka moment. Scapanorhynchus texanus, the extinct goblin shark. Feeling like an expert in my head, I went straight to Facebook with the whole, check out this goblin tooth I found, only to be shut down by all the professionals saying that this is absolutely not a goblin tooth, but a sand tiger shark called Striatolamia. Turns out I was about 30 million years off in my guess. On the verge of greatness, we were this close. What I would suggest is using a research website like ResearchGate and looking up papers recording the fauna of the time period you're hunting. For tip number three, it's gonna be a pretty simple one. You ought to subscribe to the channel. You get to experience the fossil hunts we go on and much more. Now let's actually get on to tip number three. So at number three, this is where the fun begins. You've got your geology down, and you know what species to be looking for in said area. Now how to go about finding the teeth? Here's the thing. Creeks and moving bodies of water are your friend. Over time, water will erode the geology of an area and expose whatever's in it. You just have to find an area that's eroded enough to show the formation. Like, the creek I usually hunt has cliff faces exposed of the area's formation, so I can just walk right up and pick teeth out of the wall. Now I will warn you, it's probably not a good idea to just waltz right into any creek you find and start sifting. That's illegal. Extremely illegal. Very, very illegal. Absolutely be sure to check with the owners of the property you may want to hunt, and also make sure it's not in any state parks as it's illegal to collect from them in Alabama. Insanely illegal. Ridiculously, horribly felonious. Coming in at number four, what do you look for when hunting the shark teeth in the correct formation? I go by a simple saying, shape, color, and shine. We'll just call it SCS for short though. For the first S, most shark's teeth have a very distinctive shape to them, usually either triangular or very pointy and all shaped. Of course, there are exceptions to this. Take the shark Tychotis, for example. I can't tell you how many times I've seen people mistake Tychotis teeth for rocks. The color of the teeth can also be a dead giveaway at times when in the field. Sometimes the teeth will be darker than the surrounding material, whether it be seashells or sand or whatnot. Other times the teeth will blend in perfectly with stuff like darker rocks and gravel they may be sitting in. And for the third letter, shine. All shark's teeth have a, at least some level of enamel on the crown of the tooth. 
This is one of the biggest indicators to find shark teeth in the field. Especially if the tooth is wet, the enamel of shark teeth is very reflective and light. So if the surrounding material isn't very reflective, like sand or something like that, you'll be able to see them very easily. Now my last tip is pretty self-explanatory, but I cannot stress it enough. You have to be prepared in the field. Now that covers just about everything. The right tools you'll need, as well as things like water and food whenever you're out. Especially in the summer, Alabama can get very hot outside. I can't tell you how many times I've been fossil hunting and we've had to call the hunt short because it was just so hot outside. Be sure to bring plenty of water and snacks and stuff with you, but also you cannot forget the right tools you'll need. So things like hammers and chisels, especially uh, if you get something good like a geology hammer, those will really help out. But again, it all depends on what type of material you're hunting through. If you're sifting just through a, a, a loose gravel bar in the creek, you're not gonna need anything like a hammer or anything like that. But if you're trying to get a tooth out of like something like limestone or something hard packed, then that'll definitely be a big help for you. There's plenty of different options on stuff like Amazon and eBay for geology hammers and chisels and such. But again, it just all depends on your preference and what you're hunting through. So there we go. That's just a few of the things I wish I knew when I first started fossil hunting. Now this definitely isn't the ultimate guide to fossil hunting like some YouTube videos will say. This is just a few tips that on the surface level every beginner I think should know. But honestly a lot of the knowledge just comes through experience of being in the field and knowing where you're hunting, what you're hunting, etc. So let me know in the comments if this video has helped you out at all. I would love to see if you guys implement this knowledge and I'd love to see what you find in the field going forward. And if you want to experience some of the fossil hunts that we go on with us, be sure to check out this playlist linked here. Thank you guys.